Guitarristas, hoy volvemos a estar encantados y es que regresa a nuestro canal un gran, gran guitarrista que ya habíamos tenido aquí. Estoy hablando de Paul Gilbert, que viene a hablarnos de su último álbum. Un álbum de versiones de Ron James Dio, en los diferentes grupos en los que ha estado, donde Paul interpreta las líneas vocales de Dio. Así que sin más preámbulo, vamos a ver qué nos cuenta el propio Paul sobre este fantástico disco de Dio, álbum de Paul Gilbert. Paul, how are you? I'm doing good. How are you? Great. I'm so happy to have you in our YouTube channel again. The Dio album. That's the new thing. You're right. That's uh, that's my new album. I've got the matching hat. Yeah. Uh, and uh, to me, I wanted to get the best guitar lesson in the world from the best guitar teacher, and that's Ronnie James Dio. Uh, how the idea came up? Because I think it's pretty original to try to mimic every single nuance of a vocalist with your guitar that's super interesting it's it's really different than the way that i learned to play when i was a kid um because when i was when i was a kid you know i wanted to back up a singer you know like, so when the singer's singing you're playing a rhythm and then when the singer's not singing and you're playing a solo i wouldn't try to play like a singer i'd try to play like a guitar player so i'd be you know trying to do fast exciting licks And uh, I think in, in 2007, when I, I was on the G3 tour with Joe Satriani, and I watched how he really became the singer of his band. You know, he, the, the, he uh, was playing the melodies on his guitar and, and it worked great. Like he, he did, it, did it really well and the audience liked it. I liked it too. And I, that sort of made me believe that it might be possible. <laughs> Before then I thought like, you know, Guitar players shouldn't do that. Like guitar players should, you know, you just just get a singer. Um, but I, th I think one of the reasons that I enjoy it so much is is I, I I've tried to sing before and my my voice is pretty limited. Like I, I hard for me to hit high notes that have a good tone. You know, I can I can hit a falsetto, but it, you know, it's not not a great tone. And I love, you know, the the heavy metal singers that that can thing high you know dio or tony harnell or rob halford ian gillen robert plant you know all these great singers that steven tyler you know they have an incredible high range and i could never copy that as, as a vocalist but if i play those lines on guitar the high notes that's not that's not a problem all those notes are there now there's other problems <laughs> which is you know how to how to how to breathe life into the into the melody you know how to make it feel because if you just play it like you would a scale it, it's it doesn't doesn't have the right feel so i really had to search and practice and and, and try to get the right feel of, uh, in the notes there's a lots of things i want to discuss about this album because i've been listening to it also i'm a big dio fan of course and paul gilbert fan so the this mix was great for me oh. the first thing is i i noticed maybe this is only in my head but I had the feeling that you changed your guitar tone a little bit, like having a, a wah in some point to be more, more like a, like a throat in a way. Am I right? Or I was, I don't know, making about something. Well, I would try to make it different than the, you know, what I use for the guitar sound. Mm -hmm. uh, just, but I think the, the, one of the main things in the tone was, um, you know, again, I'm, I'm copying a singer and singers have words. Mm -hmm. And, you know, a, a guitar, I don't have any words, um, but I thought I can try to get close to the vowels. So, for example, like the, the song Holy Diver, the first thing he sings is, you know, Holy Diver. And the word holy has two vowels. The ho is o, and li is e, so o, e. And with pick harmonics, You can you can try to copy that a little bit, you know, because O would be like just normal, you know, O O O, and then the E you get a, a like a pinch harmonic, e, 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 so O E O E, and as I would go through the vocal, I, I I found I was doing pinch harmonics all the time. That was like probably the one of the biggest techniques for trying to get it to sound like a, a word was okay. to was to sh to shape the tone with with the pick. And uh, so, so that was, you know, changing the tone just with my hands or, or you know, with, with, with holding the pick a different way. So in addition to the, to be, to pay attention to the notes that you're playing, you had to pay attention also to the lyrics. So there's another layer of technique. 
Yeah. To achieve that sounds <laughs> exhausting and difficult. <laughs> well, the, the more you do it, the more it becomes an instinct. Okay. And, uh, but it's, you know, for, for example, if, if you hear a piano or, you know, or a, or a harpsichord, th that's an instrument that, that ha has no control of that. Mm -hmm. You know, you, you, hit the, you hit the note and, and you might be able to make it, you change how loud it is, but actually on a harpsichord, you can't. It's always, the harpsichord is like the same volume, same attack. Um, you know, maybe the sustain is, you could change. If you let off the key, you could, you could make a short note or a long note. But, um, you know, there's not nearly as many variables, but with, with vocals, that's the trick is like, is, is to listen and, and hear the, the variables and then try to try to play them as much as you can. Yeah. Listening to the album, I realized something I never noticed before of, of Dio's lines. And that thing is how many times he does, yeah, yeah, something like that. And I was like, well, that is actually very guitar-like. So my question, and I guess my question is, was Dio's vocals influenced by heavy metal guitar or, or was it the other way around perhaps? Well, from from teaching a lot and from learning so many songs, both with vocals and guitar, there's certain phrases that I hear in in both, and uh, probably the, the main the main one that to me is like such an important part of of the language is um, is like I'll give you a couple examples of it, like the the, um, the blues song. I think it's uh, John Lee Hooker, "Boom Boom," and it goes like. And it's a slide up. And you can hear it like ACDC, have a drink on me. You know, and you know, from learning how to play that on the guitar and then learning vocal lines, you know, you 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 find that all over the place. Like not yes. not just Dio, not really like Rod Stewart, I mean, just any anybody. And it's interesting because you know it comes from blues, mm -hmm. and usually you think, oh, Dio's like pure metal, but there's a lot of blues in soul, which you find because like that's you know, that's the lick, you know, there it is again. So <laughs> you know, and and in a way, I, I think because I grew up with that, if I don't hear that lick, I have a hard time connecting to the music. Like it's just <laughs> has to do with with it's it's kind of a language or a style. So mm -hmm. you know as as you get into like you know as as rock and roll evolved into uh like i i, I probably wouldn't hear that lick in a red hot chili peppers song yeah and, and so right. i'd be going like oh, i don't know where's the lick i need that lick <laughs> <laughs> it's a different different kind although of although the i bet the guitar player would do it but the singer wouldn't yeah. no <laughs> also i noticed how much effort was put into the production to get something I believe that you try to be as close as possible to the original. Maybe I'm wrong. Yeah, I I think um, I didn't really make a rule at the beginning. I just sort of used my my instincts, and and I I, I thought if there's a place, I mean maybe the place where I, I was the most different would be like any fast guitar solo, because hmm. uh, I've rarely do I try to copy of even when I mean especially when I was a kid because I couldn't. You know, if I, you know, I was a big, big Van Halen fan. And if, you know, the fast part came up, be like, oh, I, <laughs> I can't do that. So, you know, I'd learn the rhythm guitar part and you learn if there's any kind of melodic hooks, I'd try to get those. And then the fast part, you know, even though I couldn't play it the way the, you know, the original guitar player did, maybe I had a couple licks that I, that were fast of my own mm -hmm. and I kind right. of put those in there. So I, I still do that, you know, like, if I played like a Vivian Campbell solo and he's just going crazy, you know, I, I might try to copy it here and there, but most part it's just like, okay, A minor, that's do it fast my own way. And then when it gets melodic, I'll go back and try to be able to stay, stay a little closer to it. Okay. I guess you were already very familiar with most of the songs because probably you were a fan already of, of all the songs, but was there something new or something that you never realized about the songs while making this album? Oh, a lot. I mean, I, I played the bass parts too. And Geezer Butler always surprises me because he he rarely plays the lowest note. Oh, really? Like, uh, 
it, like uh, heaven and hell, which, you know, that's a, this mm -hmm. Black Sabbath. It, it, it's heavy. And it's an E. And so I thought, like, oh, he's going to be playing like the low E string. You know, da, 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 da. Mm -hmm. He doesn't. He plays the, like the middle E. And then when it goes to A, I thought, well, oh, it's got to be the open A or, you know, or fifth fret, you know. And it's not. He plays on the 12th fret, like, like the high A. That's that's and, unusual, even for and, 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 it's, and it's not just that song, like all like all the Geezer stuff. He's always going up high, and that that always surprised. But it works. It sounds great. And uh, and then the other bass part, like Man on the Silver, or no, uh, I said, um, what was the one? Yeah, Man on the Silver Mountain. Oh, the Silver Mountain. Um, the, the the bass. I, I didn't even know who the bass player was, but I looked it up. It was a guy named Craig Gruber, and uh, it's almost like a disco bass line. Yes, really? like, like but, but, yeah. and when i first learned it i'm like no but it's but it fits it sounds great and actually <laughs> i was so happy i learned it because then sometimes like i'll be writing my own song and i'll think well let me try it's like that works great it's like one of my favorite bass lines now to use <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so this time you didn't record the drums because I think in the previous album you were in charge of the drums too. Oh yeah, I mean I, I could have tried, but it would have, it would have taken me a long time, mm -hmm. and uh, and and so I, I wanted to get somebody who could do it a little quicker, and and, <laughs> and I and I, I didn't want to be distracted. I you know I only have so much energy every day, so I wanted to really put the energy in, into the whole. <laughs> okay, would you say that I mean Dio's music? is also a lot of different guitar players music Vivian Campbell and Tony Iommi would you say they were very different very apart their styles or Dio is like something that reunites them in a single style well both I mean I, I think Dio does unite them I think the, song, the songs fit together because of that but at the same time especially I mean I'm, I'm a guitar player so I'm, I'm looking at the small details and you know, I love all three guitar players, but um, to, to me, they're, they're really recognizable. You know, I, I hear Richie Blackmore. I know it's Richie Blackmore. And like like Richie, a lot of his rhythm parts are single notes. Like, I mean, if, if he does, and if he does play a chord, he plays it in a particular way. He plays a lot of those two note bar chords mm -hmm. where the root, the root is high in the voicing and the, and the fifth is, is low, you know, smoke in the water kind of thing. So he yeah. either does like that or single notes. And Tony Omi tends to play the power chords. And uh, yeah, and then Vivian Campbell goes you know, a little more like, you know, early 80s metal, you know, new wave of British heavy metal style, mm -hmm. um, where you have like a, an open string and then a stab on, on top, you know. Um, and I can hear kind of a Gary Moore influence, a lot of what Vivian was doing at that time. Mm -hmm. So they're all... They're all cool, but they're all different. They're all different, yeah. Also, I guess the song selection must be hard, must be difficult just to choose a few of them. Well, it, you know, it, 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 I, I definitely love more deal songs than are there. Yeah. Um, but I, I think um, I tried to pick ones that featured the vocals. So, for example, I love Stargazer. Yeah, it's one of my favorite uh, deal songs. But it has, like, these long... Um, instrumental part mm -hmm. and it, another one like uh, uh tara woman i thought of doing that oh, but it's got that, that, like that that, that long keyboard intro and yeah. if i did i, I would want to do learn that keyboard intro on guitar which would be i'd, I'd like to do it but it, i thought man that's going to take me like a week to figure that to you know to practice it and i thought i would rather spend that week learning the dio stuff mm -hmm. so you know, I, I really wanted to just you know spend my time with my fingers you know uh focused on what ronnie sang when i'm trying to learn a song of course i'm i'm just an amateur but um when i'm trying to learn a song i sometimes would do it by ear but that method sometimes is not uh, satisfying because i cannot understand what's sounding in, in the record and other times i go to a book but sometimes books are not accurate either um did you encounter this situation did you do it by ear did you uh look for uh sheet music how did you do it well, I'm I'm a terrible reader, so the um really the only time that I that I look for for music is if it's like a guitar part that has an altered tuning. Mm -hmm. So for for example, um, I was doing a Led Zeppelin tribute, and we were doing the Rain song, mm -hmm. and I knew that was probably an altered tuning, but I didn't know what the altered tuning was. And then of course, 
with an old with a with a different tuning, it's like starting over. Like I don't know where anything is. So so I, when I learned the rain song, I got the tablature. It was like, oh, so I'm so glad I could you know I get the tablature because it's so easy to figure it out now. But if it's if it's standard tuning, I'd I'd, I'd much rather use my ear. And uh, the one thing I did do, which was helpful, is on on YouTube, I could find a lot of isolated tracks, mm -hmm. uh, especially for for the vocals. So I would, you know, I I went through. I mean, it wasn't for everything. I'd say about maybe half of of the album, I could find isolated tracks of just Ronnie's voice, and that was really. I would put that. I've got a a, a computer app called the Amazing Slow Downer. And I'd, mm -hmm. I'd put Ronnie's voice in that and just go, you know, listen to that like one line at a time and slow it down. And because and, sometimes like there's a little, like a, like a bass note that he like, mm, you know, like this little octave jump, but I'd try to get the, that stuff. And and if it was just going by at full speed, you wouldn't notice it. Oh yeah. Um, so I, I, I got, I got some good details for, for, from doing that. And uh, the, the funny thing too, is like, I, I got so deep. I was listening to, um, stand up and shout you know I, I had the isolated vocal and you know of course i'm listening to the melody without the music it's just you know the only ronnie and i started to realize like this is really reminding me of another song and the song was last Tra last train to clarksville by the monkeys mm -hmm. and, I, and i went to youtube and i found last last train to clarksville without the vocals and and I, I I put that and Ronnie's isolated vocal in Pro Tools. They're, they're different keys, so I could I could switch it mm -hmm. match the key, and then I you know edited it so Ronnie's vocals matches up with the rhythm and it fits perfectly. <laughs> you made a mashup like those on the <laughs> internet who has her vocal. <laughs> That's amazing. Actually, when I was listening to your version of Holy Diver. Um, that's a riff most of us have been playing so many times, but when I listen to it playing played by you I was like oh my god it is so accurate so accurate I mean there's something you really nailed of how the original was played give me the secret please <laughs> there's something yeah well uh I, you know just I just try to get it right um <laughs> but I, I I know there's some things where I probably didn't play the original like and I, I want, I don't, I don't always know, you know, I'm just, you know, I'm, I'm, since it's by ear, it's sort of a guess. You know, hopefully it's a good guess, but for example, stand up and shout. Mm -hmm. I don't know if, if Vivian played that with all downstrokes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And to me, if he did, that would be really hard. Like it's because it's for downstrokes. That's unbelievably mm -hmm. fast. Mm -hmm. And, you know, if I had to do it with downstrokes, I would probably need about a week mm -hmm. to just build up the muscle and then like make the room really hot <laughs> and just go like, okay. Ah! And, 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 and like, just, you know, attack it, which, you know, would probably sound pretty cool, but I, you know, I'm 56 years old. I don't know. I don't know if I could do it. And so, you know, I do it with alternate, like alternate picking, which is much more efficient. I mean, still have to put some force into it and I still, you know, try to get it to, you know, feel aggressive and powerful, but it's it's so much more efficient that you know I, I and if and if it needed to get faster I could still play it faster, so that kind of thing you know I don't know if I did it exactly the same way, but hopefully hopefully I still be able to get the you know the right emotion across. It, it sounds amazing to me. And in terms of gear, what did you use for for get the sounds of because it's a heavier album than the previous one, even though both of them are rock music. Well, I mean, I was at home in my studio, so I had, you know, my my guitar collection, my pedal collection. So I, I used a lot more equipment than I really needed to use. I was just having fun. Um, but I would say, like overall, for the for the Black Sabbath stuff with, with Tony Iommi, I, I I tended to use my JHS PG fourteen pedal. Mm -hmm. uh, that one just had a nice thick Sabbath sound. For the um, for the Richie Blackmore stuff, which is to me a little cleaner, but very compressed. I used a compressor. I had a boss compressor, a little blue pedal. And I ran that into a JHS um, tilt pedal, which, you know, this distortion pedal. So like compression and, okay. and distortion together, you know, gave me a nice Blackmore tone. And mm -hmm. for the, uh, the Vivian Campbell stuff, I think I used a JHS uh, overdrive preamp and an and a exotic effects AC booster. 
And I, I don't remember what the order was, or right? I might have even done it in both orders because you know it sounds a little different depending on which pedal comes first. And it, it's and I actually I documented it all. I took I took photos of everything in case I needed to do an over you know, like fix something later. And uh, you know because it's so easy to take pictures now with the phone. And my my engineer was like, yeah, after you after you play, snap a photo of it, and then you remember if you need to get the sound again. Mm -hmm. And and so I I, I remember going back and like it, it's it's all different <laughs> but it uh you know those are kind of the ones i remember i, I was i was thinking i was mostly surprised that i never really used a compressor pedal to get a distorted sound before and it really felt right for the blackmore stuff okay it's so interesting how you needed uh i wouldn't say super different gear for different guitar players but it was actually different pedals and different effects for each one of them. Yeah, and also for the for of course for the Ronnie James Dio vocals, for that I, I had a uh, I mean again it, it, it's different every song, but one of the ones I remember was uh, I've got a Fender Vibrolux Reverb mm -hmm. uh, amp, which is it's actually a combo amp, but I I blew up the speakers, so I I just took a saw and and and, and like chopped off the speakers and made it into a head. <laughs> And it's it's a, it's a loud, you know, the tube amps can be loud, you know, and that's mm -hmm. to get distortion, you got to crank it up. So uh, I, I used like a THD hot plate, okay, a, a, a speaker attenuator. And that way I can crank up the amp and uh, and then use the attenuator so it's not too loud. And just ran that into a, a Randall isolation cabinet. And that that's kind of got like this nasally, you know, a little bit of honky mid range. And, yeah. uh, and and it has a nice reverb too. A lot of times I use a spring reverb a little bit, and so I, I think I, I use that a fair amount for the Ronnie stuff. And what guitars did you use? And more specifically, did you use a specific pickup positions for each kind of sound? Again, a lot of different guitars. I think one of the main discoveries was because I was using so many pick harmonics to try to get the vowel sounds. Um, it's you have more access to pick harmonics if you have less frets. Like if you okay. have a, like like a twenty four fret guitar, you start bumping into the the edge of the of the fret or the or the fretboard. But if it's like a twenty one fret guitar, you've got more room to get pick harmonics. So I've I've got some Ibanezes from the early eighties, like the the Roadstar guitars or the Blazer. Mm -hmm. That it's they're similar to a Strat. You know, they got a twenty one fret neck, and they also have a pretty round radius. And that means you have to get the action up pretty high, mm. uh, because you know if you if you do a, a big bend or on a round radius, it frets out. So you got to keep the action high, and uh, to have high action on twenty one frets, I found it really it had great sustain, great tone, a lot of pick harmonics, and uh, so I ended up using like the, that. The, one of the main ones I used was a an Ibanez RS three fifteen, which is like you know nineteen eighty nineteen eighty two nineteen eighty three somewhere in there. Uh, Roadstar 2 guitar, and you know, I, I bought it used on reverb, it was cheap. You know, the, I think that the, the, the refret cost more than the guitar. And there were any special things in, in amp territory, the special things for what for amplifiers? Oh, I think that the main thing is I, I like to have the, the speaker close to me, so I, I've got a little pr pr uh, Fender Princeton reverb that's. You know it's small, but but I can get it close to me so I can feel the guitar speaker because I don't I don't want to hear it in the headphones. I don't want to hear it in the studio monitors. I want to kind of feel it. Mm -hmm. So it it doesn't need to be loud. It just needs to be close. Okay. <laughs> and uh, th so the little combos work nice for that. And then sometimes you know if I use like a Marshall because I used a Marshall JTM forty five for some stuff. It's a head or mm -hmm. that Fender head I was talking about for the head stuff. I, I would run that into a, a Randall ISO cabinet and I'd open it up a little okay. bit. So the sound would come out and I could still feel it. Okay, I, that's a good trick. Open a little bit, it, it is a trick. Yeah, and we, we even stuck a mic outside. Like we put, you know, it had a microphone inside right next to the speaker, but we'd also put a, like a Royer out, outside and pick up a little oh. bit of the roll. Oh, that was okay. Kind of nice. it, it was a pleasure having you at Guitaristas. Thank you so much for your time. Right on, thank you. Have a good one. Thank, thank you so much. Bye -bye.